So, uh, hello, welcome back to part two of our stupid adventure. We're here with, um, with, uh, Gondorf McDonald. And we're going to go up this, these stairs to the next floor. The yes. The merry weather in our source of happy in the gods, sacrifice that stay for everyone from the void. His son, Alexander, now leads the Divine Order. Uh, led by Magister Crusade. The dominant magisters of the divine are rounding up sorcerers for exile. Ah! Empty. You gotta keep going and keep looking. Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you smoothly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. That's very rude. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest. And he's the chap in charge of the logs. No, uh, You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Well, that's not gonna be good for me. This is one care before this is place. Are you seriously? This is... This is a ship. It floats on water. <laughs> yes. It is a vessel oh, yes. that allows us to travel the sea. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. Oh, that sounds lovely. I'm sure it will be a lovely journey to your... to... to... to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For was there, yeah, there was a bit of an accident in the cargo hold. Uh, a person's dead. Is he? Oh, well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? The, the Magister's dead as well. She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare, but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. Why have you got... Also, what is this thing around my neck? Why, for my <laughs> peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? Um, See what happens. I'll no play in your games. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything, you idiot. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Oh, you're because a joke. Because to answer your question, what this collar does is this. You're a right it makes pillar, you aren't you? to cast source. Oh, I, I very much dislike this lady. Alright, uh, read. The Source King insists that, you are, that there are no magics too foul. There we go. More gold I have. Off to the herd, little sheep. Away you go. Good God. Behind the Magister, a blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Nothing here that I want, except for the orange, maybe. Yeah, I'll buy an orange. It's a small ship. His name was Finn. Oddball. Looked to me like he saw something he wished he hadn't before he came here. We'll find out who did it. One way or another. Oh, that sounds ominous. Ugly sight, isn't it? Yes. Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. We are prisoners. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. That's actually kind of sad. I, I, I can actually understand that because this is because with the way Void Woken come for Void Woken actually come for Source, it's really I can understand that. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of, she looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. 
Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. N no, not yet. There's no weapons on this flipping ship. Well, actually, that makes that makes more sense than it should. <laughs> yes. I thought as much. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? I'm not a snitch. Think about it. It's one of you who got killed, not one of us. We want to find who did it yeah. and bring them to justice. That makes sense. Who's your real enemy here? You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. That's a fair point. <laughs> oh, I'm not suited for this. It's sea cow, not sea sheep. Yes, that's interesting. Haven't got any shoes, have you? These days. Oh, sorry. Oh, people. Maybe I can sell things to them. Old cap. This is one. Two physical. This is better. This is actually better than a cap. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, husband, would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all rat like babes that I am by no account this loathsome woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergic. The young woman seems about to raise her hand, but quickly remembers herself and nods pointedly at the excited children. Who indeed? Why, my name is... The children break out into giggles. Uh, sorry. Yes. I say it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll shake your hand. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. I disagree. I am terrified if I don't know anything. Uh, do you want to come with? Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. I will. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel... As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Good luck. That's weird. Do you know Eloisa? She's a pretty really good singer. I'm better, though. Listen. La, la, la. That's bad. That is actually bad. What have you got to sell? Why do you have beer? You're six. Gods, didn't your mother teach you any manners? She got eaten by a void woken. Forget it. Yes, boots. Oh, hi. You're a dwarf. My best friend is a dwarf. Her name is Esther. She's smaller than me, but stronger, too. I'll see her when I get home. Oh, you poor sweet summer child. We're never getting home. You, sorcerer. Blood? No. Go! Oof. Okay, 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 okay. You don't need to get your tizzers in, Schwartz. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and examines your face, tugging at your ears and prodding your nose. Uh, stop. Fascinating. Stop it! It's not nice! I wonder who you are. My name is Fane. I am a scholar from... well... I am a seeker of knowledge. That is enough. It is pleasurable to meet you. What are you actually looking for? Is there? Wherever do you keep it? Certainly not in your books. I have been reading this one for several minutes and I have yet to find a single insight into the mysteries of the universe. We're kind of, if you've noticed, we're kind of in a ship. You know, a ship at the beginning of time and space. They're not gonna put Jane Austen in a flipping book, in a flipping ship to a prison. Tell me. What do you know of your, our world's history? Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. Oh, don't give me that. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. Ooh. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? I've thought about it. No idea. <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Oh, yeah. Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Uh, I'm actually curious why you want to know about the guns. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Well, well. 
What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. I'm inspecting your teeth. In any case, that wasn't spectacularly obvious. Oh, I'm kind of an idiot. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. But merchandise, merchandise. I'm a dog. I have, you know, I'm what the flip. I'm... Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? I, I can cook, yeah. Oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? I uh, just to buy whatever I can find. Yes, I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style. I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. <laughs> I mean, I wash, I bathe. A guy lives in a cave most of my life. I'm, I'm quite good with the. Play, do pers take some personal pride. The very basic. My beard, stuff. obviously. I suppose I'm a that's a start. Beards. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook and groom, but you have the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. What? My slave, of course. Oh, but... I see. Yes, I, I suppose it must take some time for the full extent of this honor to sink in. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now, shoo! Can You've already got your chef. Why do you only have a herring? A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? What do you mean? Shep, of course. Right. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And sick as a leper's cat. Oh, seem sick. Say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mums. But there's more. Listen close. It, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Ah, this is good news, boy. Good news. What? It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Okay. For my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. You shouldn't burn such a magnificent beard. Ah, so you've eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate. Even here. Also, we're going to a prison. Why are you so excited about going to a prison? Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. I won't in. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. Oh, yes, snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. What? Hmm. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. I hope so. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. 
She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. Oh. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? No, thank you. She chuckles once more. That red-cheeked refusal tells me more than licking you would. I haven't done anything! I live but in a cave! Suck yourself, darling. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp if I'm... Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. I'm gonna move closer to him. He seems like a nice fellow. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Inches less that way, right? Yeah. Actually, it does. Doesn't. That's nice. That feels rather nice, actually. Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ife. And now, you. Why do you think you're a murderer? We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Pointed? What have you been doing to him? he was at 14 years old. Only difference is, somebody gave him a bigger sword, and now he's Johnny Big Pants. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame, sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Do you know anything about Lordjoy? Because I don't know much about it. I just know it's. I just know we're heading to a prison. The Joy. I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Uh, I have no, I don't really care about him. He's kind of a pillock. Not interested in the son of the Divine himself. <laughs> I don't blame you one bit. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You, dwarf. What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet, and that bee is me. Mm, you're not a bee, you're a human. Name. Um, Gil. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Yeah, we're running dangerously low on supplies, you know. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Right. You faring okay so far? Well, I've been through worse. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's god walking, you know. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous... So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. Oh no. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others Hi. whose lives must end. Oh. oh God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer. Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle him, hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, then, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. Ooh. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her men quickly! If she casts source, the void will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. We're dead. We're so dead. Precise. Run! Run, 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 run. Oh, no, she's first in line. Ah! 